Welcome to SV Seeker. My name's Doug. That's Seeker and I screwed the pooch this morning. I built this frame first and so you know you get that methodology in your head. So what I did is I figured out the angle to make this cut and it's the same over here and it's also the same down there because all it's doing is coming out of plane and then going back over to the you know so it's the, the same angles. So I got out here this morning figured out the angle and then uh, put a book in my head and started cutting and it's like this doesn't do that because it's only three turns so I have to make up that to get it back okay it didn't work out the same so I brought my pattern out he even helped me out with it so we redo that I'm gonna blame it on the book <laughs> it is a really good book it's called sea people it's all about Polynesia the islands out there how those people got to where they are and the things they believe in and it contrasts all the different theories about how they got there because that's really is a remarkable thing so I'm looking forward to meeting them in person someday make a wind chime out of this thing. Almost done with it. This is a long day. I tell you what, it gets really long when the sun comes around the front end of the boat and you're in it. Now, as to the artistic fish plates, the diamond and the rounded corners, those plates are designed so that they relieve the stress. There's not one hard stress buildup point like a, you get with a square corner. These have less stress buildup in these corners, so less cracking due to fatigue. In all honesty, that's not going to fatigue crack because I only got like maybe 30 miles over road to get to the port, so it's not going to have time to do that. But if it was a frame underneath your truck or a tractor or something that's going to spend a lot of time going down the road, you, you might think about it. You know, I remember seeing one of those airline disaster videos where the plane had square corners in the windows. I don't know what it was, Constellation. And I was, I don't even know what it was. It wasn't a Constellation. They have round windows, don't they? Anyway, and they had a fatigue crack it started right in that corner so sharp corners are the places where fatigue cracks start so you know but don't get carried away with it every time you see something that's welded with a square corner doesn't mean it's going to have a fatigue crack it kind of depends on how it's loaded and i changed parker klein's design his design is that one on the back and i went to this for the other two frames and the reason I did that is because this follows the contour of the hull a lot better so I'll have to put in less padding and stuff between it and it also <laughs> laziness it reduced to three joints instead of uh, four joints like I have on that first one but he pointed out to me something that's very true this is the part of the frame where I have the wells that takes the most load and and yeah it's true you know you take a beam and you're going to put downward force on it. It's supported here and here by wheels, but out in the middle, it's not uh, any support at all. So that's where it takes most of the, the forces of the load. And so I put the weld right where the load is. But I put all these doublers on it, so I'm not really worried about it at all. I'm more worried about how I'm going to get these things all arranged together and underneath the boat.
Well, I disrupted them last week. They all moved into one log here. Look at them all. They're all over the ground here, too. Those are carpenter ants. They're going to eat this log up in no time at all. I'm not quite done with it, guys. Look. See there, it's Paul and Ringo. <laughs> that joke's going to be lost on a lot of the young ones. I win! There is indeed great power in your ass, Eric. Alright, I got another great book for you. This is Outlaw Ocean by uh, Ian Urbina. He's a New York Times uh, newspaper writer and he compiled all of his stories about the, the marine industry into a book. It's all about, you know, uh, whale hunting, sea shepherds, piracy, everybody breaking the laws out there. Fantastic book. Learned a lot from it. Yeah, well, those tropical storms have been blowing up from the Gulf. I sure appreciate the shade. And most of the heavy lifting is done, so now it's putting some framing in between these things. 12 by 50, and yeah, they are heavy. So next thing to do is put some frames through here to tie these together, some pipes up there to tie them together. Once it's all welded up, then we can lift it up and get it closer to the boat. Well, this morning my two spreader beams are going into the mix. They were originally used for lifting the sides of the boat when it was getting put together. I had to spread the load out and attach on in multiple places and they've done their job. I've used them for ad hoc straight edges and jib cranes and other things through the years, but this is going to be their final trip. need something else up here but the tires go in here too so I don't want to put something in that's just going to be in the way and get cut back out. So next thing I do is work on getting the wheel sets in here. So I'll have to raise the whole thing up so I can get the wheels underneath it and that one needs to be cut down a bit. beams come across go through here between the wheels and in front of the wheel just barely though another 45 inches left
Okay, next step is move this back there. But another day, this one's 100 degrees already. I need to get this thing to slide that way at some point. So we're gonna try some rollers. Pipe for rollers. Of course we don't want it to roll too easy. You know, there's something about building a bow that's just fun. shift the wheels or the frame or both and the remnants of Hurricane Laura are overhead which is lovely thank you very much shade yeah, how to plow your front yard huh This beam up to here. I'm going to cut it off, bring it out a little more, go up with it, and then I'll cut this to get them to go across. Actually, they're not going across, that's going to come underneath. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's time for a new nozzle. Well, tomorrow we gotta drag the wheels under and hopefully not push the frame out of the way, so we'll see. Now last time I used these things it was for uh, making the main mast. Uh, we rolled the pipe on these. They're going to come in handy again. <laughs> Put a little pad in there so it doesn't scratch my paint. Oh yeah, made some progress. There 
we got a flat tire over here. We need to compress the spring some. Well, that's as far as it's going to go for now. You know, you keep looking for where it's binding up, and I couldn't find it. And then I finally looked down here, and it's like, hell, it's the beam already hitting the tire. And it's only this forward frame because it dives down steeper than the others. Go back here and show you and see the, the shallow frames they missed by a long shot. So I think what I'm going to do is cut that forward frame away and move it forward. So I'll have to take these beams out, but I can reuse them someplace else and cut some longer ones to go in here. And I think I got room. Well, maybe. Because if I can move it forward eight inches, well, that's going to be close because you can see it's already back underneath the skeg by eight inches. Yeah, I could do that. See, there's more than a foot up here. So we'll just have to have it underneath the skeg a little bit. That's not a big deal. So right now we're about 23 feet wide, which is uh, the wheels, you know, the, the boat up there with the catwalk. That's even wider. That's about 24. But down here we're talking about stop signs and curbs and things. So if I can get it under 23, I think we'll be doing ourselves a favor. See if I change that forward frame, I can pull these tires in. Maybe even another foot, probably about uh, half a foot. That makes this 22, maybe 21 and a half feet wide. Yeah, it's worth doing. My new lug nuts came in, so we're putting all the lug nuts on the wheels today. And that's getting done by Peter, who's back in town. Say hello, Peter. What up, everybody? All right, now you're going to make an oath not to make anybody cry this time, all right? Yeah, I'm just okay. going to do what I'm told. <laughs> Harbor Freight winch has been with me since I started building the boat. Me and it go back a long time. All right. Right there, center. Same as this tractor, Jack. Gone through hell. So for everybody out there that says, you should be buying quality tools, not that crap. Like, well, you didn't send me any money, so. Huh. Now, I'm just gonna make sure that the wheels are parallel to the boat. The only piece of advice is don't leave the controller plugged in out in the rain because it turned itself on one night, nearly destroyed itself. 64 and a half, inch and a half out. All right. I like where the frame is. To move the wheels without moving the frame. Good fucking luck. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. Quarter. 64 and a 16th. That's that's three sixteenths off. All right, we can go down the road crooked. And that puts me at 11 feet, so 22 feet wide at the outside of the tires. And see that's see that's gonna work out great. So we can run beams straight up to that bulwark pipe. To take some of the load up there. You see the boat's even wider than uh, 22. It's going to be more like 23, 23 and a half because of these catwalks down both sides. But I checked on the Department of Transportation's website here in Oklahoma, ODOT, and uh, good information there. Made some phone calls this morning. Nice, friendly people. You know, I'm really proud of Oklahoma when it comes to moving big loads. They have made this where you can get a permit in 15 minutes if you do this routinely. For me, there's a steeper learning curve, but they're helpful over the phone, so awesome job. 
and this is obviously a heavy wide load and uh, they actually have uh, a special permit for this type of load and you submit a uh, drawing of the rear end of the boat to show how wide it is and where the axles are situated another drawing from the side and they'll use that for uh, manually determining if the route the computer selects is okay but I plugged the numbers in last night GIS in just a matter of minutes comes up with a nice route and I looked at it like yeah it looks great they're taking us over bridges not underneath anything and there's a little weird route that uh, I didn't even think about to get us to the port road save our good old winch and remember if somebody tells you you got to buy those expensive tools you do not don't let that get between you and your dream money is a big excuse and a lot of people use it don't let them make that excuse for you if you're one of those people out there getting it done send us your photos inspire somebody else thanks for watching